Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Jay Land Bio here for another exciting video. Today, we are going to be focusing on properties of solids, liquids, and gases. Now, that seems pretty simplistic, and for the most part, it is. Most of this video is going to focus on different types of solids and how we can differentiate them based on the different physical and chemical properties that exist. But we'll dive into a little bit about the difference between solids, liquids, and gases on a molecular level as well. So without further ado, let's get going. So hopefully by the end of this video, you should be able to explain properties of solids and liquids, as well as the relative intermolecular forces such as uh, melting point and vapor pressure. You should be able to draw out intermolecular interactions and describe the properties of ionic, covalent network, molecular, and metallic solids. And hopefully we'll be able to differentiate between the molecular properties of solids, liquids, and gases. So let's get going. So let's talk about solids, liquids, and gases on a molecular level. And as you probably already know, because you've probably already taken a basic chemistry class before, solid molecules tend to be much closer together and have stronger intermolecular forces, stronger attractions, and therefore less kinetic energy. They're less able to move around if they are close to each other and in a solid. Liquids tend to have weaker intermolecular forces, higher kinetic energy, and gases have virtually no intermolecular forces, I say virtually, We'll get to that in the later part of this unit and have the highest possible kinetic energy that randomly moving around. So these different states of matter can be drawn in a particle diagram. You would just need to draw solid molecules close together, liquids a little bit further apart, and gases just kind of moving around everywhere having a good old time. So let's dive in and talk about the four specific types of solids that we want to make sure that we know. And there are four of them. Ionic solids, covalent network solids, molecular solids, and metallic solids, each of which have different chemical properties as well as physical properties. So ionic solids, as we have discussed previously, are characterized by having ionic bonds. Those are large electronegativity differences, typically one being a metal and the other being a nonmetal. They form uh, lattice structures by alternating ions, which maximizes attractions and minimizes repulsions. We've talked about this previously. Ionic solids have very high melting and boiling points due to the strong inter, uh, intramolecular attractions that exist between the ions themselves. They're very brittle. We've talked about this previously, is that if there is a stress on the ionic solid, that forces the ions to not alternate anymore, and therefore we would have similarly charged particles next to each other, which would repel, thus causing it to break. Now, ionic solids cannot conduct electricity as a solid itself because the ions are not free moving. They are stuck within that lattice structure. However, if we dissolve them in solution, then they become free flowing and can conduct electricity, as well as if they are in a liquid, we heat it high enough to melt it, those ions become free flowing and then can move and can conduct electricity. Now, covalent network solids are atoms bonded in a three-dimensional network. These are typically formed from nonmetals and typically are repeating elements. So typically you see things like carbon or silicon in covalent network solids. These have very high melting points because they have very strong covalent bonds that are holding them together. Now these cannot conduct electricity and these form things like diamond as well as graphite. The difference between diamond and graphite because they're both made from carbon, the carbon atoms in diamond typically covalently bond four times whereas the covalent the carbons in graphite can only bond a handful of times. And you see kind of the little stems that poke between the different layers of graphite. Those are intermolecular forces. So as you draw a pencil on a piece of paper, you're breaking those intermolecular forces and those sheets of graphite are what go on your paper. So covalent network solids typically form from repeating non-metal atoms, have very high melting points and cannot conduct electricity. Now this is different from molecular solids. Molecular solids are also covalent compounds. However, the individual constituent parts of a molecular solid are attracted to each other through intermolecular forces rather than intramolecular forces. If we go back and think about our covalent network solid, they were almost all covalent bonds that are attached to each other. However, molecular solids are attracted to each other through intermolecular forces. And as a result, they have lower boiling points than covalent network solids or ionic solids. Remember that intermolecular forces are weaker than that of the intramolecular forces. So when we melt molecular solids or boil molecular solids, we're breaking the intermolecular forces, which are weaker. So therefore they're going to have lower boiling points and lower melting points than that of covalent network solids. 
These also do not conduct electricity because they do not have free-flowing electrons. The last type of solid we're going to focus on is metallic solids, and again, we have talked about this previously as well. Metallic solids are bonded through metallic bonds, which contain delocalized electrons, meaning that those electrons are not specific to one atom that is in the metallic solid structure. Now, this allows for the conduction of electricity as a solid because those electrons are free-flowing. They can move through the metallic solid very easily. Because they're delocalized electrons, that actually makes them very malleable and bendable because those electrons are not specific to one bond within the metallic solid. So they're bendable, flexible, they're duct, which means you can make them into wires and malleable, you can bend them and mold them around. So making sure that we know the difference between these four types of solids is really important. So as a result, I put together a handy little chart here that's just an overview. The bonding strategies of ionic solids are ionic, metallic is metallic bonds. Molecular solids and covalent network solids are covalent. Three of the four have high melting points. Molecular solids don't because you're breaking the intermolecular forces, and you can see that on the side here which says when melted. Only one of these conducts electricity as a solid, and that is metallic solid, but in solution or as a liquid, ionic solids can conduct electricity as well. So again, this little chart here is actually really convenient because it breaks down the four different types of solids into their specific chemical properties, and then by using these properties, we can determine what types of solids we have in lab or based on some data or information that is given. So again, hopefully pretty straightforward video today. Hopefully you can identify between solids, liquids, and gases on a molecular level, and then also describe the four different types of solids, ionic, covalent network, molecular, and metallic. Hope you've enjoyed the video. As always, if you have any questions, make sure you let me know. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And as always, if you have any questions, I've just repeated myself, but let me know. Have a great day and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.